WordPress is so common, even if you're not hosting on WordPress.com, that many hosting companies will automatically provide you a way to install WordPress on their servers. That's how well trusted it is across the internet. So here I am logged into my own hosting company. I happen to be using HostGator. There's many others out there. HostGator is definitely one of the more popular ones. Uh, them and Bluehost, uh, GoDaddy, there's several others, but we're just going to look at this particular example. Now, not every hosting company is going to have something like this. Just going to forewarn you about that. And not everyone's going to do it the exact same way. But just to kind of give you a good starting point. So I'm going to come down here. And in my case, my control panel, I want to scroll all the way down to where I see a software section. And I have two separate options I can look at to install WordPress. Okay. Now I've got some other things in there that I can do, but I'm going to focus on the two that are important. First is quick install. And with quick install, it opens up a new tab. I choose what do I want to install? They list WordPress as well as Joomla and Drupal, which are two other content management systems. All three of them are very generic content management systems. You can do almost anything you want with them. Uh, they are similar in different, a lot of different ways, but we're just going to focus on WordPress. They give you a couple other options. We're going to click on the WordPress and then we're going to choose install. And when you choose install, it's going to bring up a little form. What do you want? So uh, do I need to put it into a regular domain name like this? Do I want to install it in a subdirectory? Uh, the reason for this drop down is in case you have subdomains. So if you had a different subdomain instead of just your regular www or one that's not being used, you could put it on just a subdomain. It's going to ask you for an admin email. This is going to be your email address. It can be anything you want, a username, as well as a first and last name in your blog title. That's it. You click on the install WordPress and it will be done for you in 30 seconds to a minute and a half. That's all it takes. It's really, really that simple. Now, if I come over here and see the other option, I can click on WordPress manager. WordPress manager. I'm going to come in here and say, Hey, we haven't found any installations. So I'm going to install a new copy. From this, I have more options. So this is a little bit more of like a power user type of thing. So it's going to show you all the different versions that are out there. You might say, well, wow, that's a lot of different versions. And yeah, it is. Uh, typically, you're going to want to install the most recent version. Every once in a while, there's going to be an older version that you want to use because of like a plug-in compatibility or something like that. But Typically, you're going to want to go with the more recent versions. They have all the security patches installed and updated for you, etc. Once again, I'm going to pick my domain name, and this is where I can choose if I have subdomains I want to install it on, as well as if I want to put it in a directory. So I can install it in a subdirectory, in a subdomain, in my main domain, on the main directory, however I want. Lots of flexibility. I'm going to pick my site name and my site description. I can just type in these boxes anything I want. I have an option for enabling something they call WPMU. And what that is, is it's a multi-site. So this allows your site to have sub-sites underneath it. You can manage one and then give out domains to other people. It's all under the main domain, but you have multiple authors and they have their own separate independent site you kind of control and manage it the way you want it to be done. This is actually how WordPress.com is installed and set up. So if you go there, that's, you kind of have an idea of what they're doing. Each site has their own theme, their own plugins, etc. So there's some advantages to that. Under that situation, you can limit what plugins and themes you want people to choose from. So you can kind of do some limitation. A good example for this might be if you have a family and you want to give one to mom and dad and brother and sister and uncle and you give them things and they're not real technical, so you kind of lock it down for them. Now, 
If you don't have a multi-site, you can still have multiple users and you can set up permissions, but everyone uses the same theme and all those files are shared. Now, you can put up restrictions to prevent other people from overriding certain configuration settings or other people's documents, but everyone is using the exact same theme. It's all part of the same site. Notice once again, just like with the other quick install, you get to put in the username and password, and it'll actually give you a score as to how good is this password. Using pass for your password is not good. And let me give you a hint, using password isn't much better, okay? You're gonna have your admin email. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can choose a default language. And you can also do some basic installation with some plugins. So you can say, for example, I want to have a plugin that's going to limit the number of attempts that can be someone can put in incorrectly. It's a sign that someone's trying to hack the system. We're going to block them out. Okay, so I can do a couple different things like that. I can come down to my advanced options and you can see the database name for my WordPress instance. That and the table prefix you probably don't have to worry about. Do you want to get emails when there's an update? So WordPress will automatically email you if there's an update, lets you know about it. Not only that, I can come over here and choose to upgrade either minor versions, which is usually like a security update, or a major version, which is going to give me new features and functionality. I don't even have to do it. It's just going to happen all behind the scenes for me. In addition to the upgrade of WordPress itself, I can choose to click on this box to update my plugins automatically or my themes. I can set up a default theme, one of these, and I can kind of scroll down here and see some other ones, pick it, and once I'm done, I can click the install button. Once I click the install button, once again, in the next 30 to 90 seconds, my WordPress site will be completely configured, set up for me, and then I'll have a link that I can go to. I'm automatically going to be logged in. Remember, I got the login name and password. I do want to remember that. And I'm going to get an email about it as well. Very simple to do. Then I'll be logged into WordPress and I can go in and start working with it. Now, with other hosting companies, I know sometimes you'll have a form like this that you'll fill out. You'll click the install and then it sets up what they call a batch job. And that means there's a job that's running off on their web server somewhere and it will get around to your particular WordPress instance when it gets a chance. Now, sometimes that happens in a minute or two. Sometimes it happens in five or 10 or 30 minutes. So it just depends upon your hosting company and how they have the installation process working for you. So this is just a real simple example with HostGator. I hope you like this. Next video, I'm going to show you how to do the manual install, which is much harder and you can see exactly how easy it actually is.